and some of you will be bringing you this Ascension Day service actually from inside church. Although please don't get too excited, we're not allowed to open for public worship yet. Um, this is uh, just because it's Ascension Day and we thought many of you would appreciate being able to see that church is still, with the exception of a little bit of extra dust lying around, in perfectly good hands. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we've been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb, his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers. Trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, so we celebrate the story of his party. Hail the day that sees him rise, Alleluia, to his throne above the skies, Alleluia, Christ the Lamb for sinners in, Alleluia, enters now the Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. And so we had a collect for Ascension Day. Grant and beseech the Almighty God, that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind live and ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Now, epistle reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, reading the first verse. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the Apostles, as he'd chosen, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but a few days and you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said to them, It's not for you to know the times nor dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him, him from their sight. They were looking intently up to the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken away from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 44th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. And when he'd led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So as we heard at the beginning, it's been 40 days since we celebrated Easter. Um, it's been quite a long sentence, I guess, for some who uh, haven't been out in all at that time. But here we are, 40 days after the resurrection, when this next extraordinary event takes place. An important event. So important, in fact, that uh, it's recorded twice in our scriptures. You've heard it today from St Luke's Gospel and also from the Acts of the Apostles. And in a sense it marks the end of one and the beginning of the other. And perhaps um, both these books really um, uh, need to be looked at under different titles to really get the significance of what's happening today. The Gospel of Luke, in fact all the Gospels, effectively record the Acts of Jesus. And so the Acts of Jesus on earth are coming to an end. And then the Acts of the Apostles, it's not really about the Apostles, it's about the Acts of the Holy Spirit, which is what Jesus promises will come to take his place. So on the one hand, at the very end of Luke's Gospel, we have the Gospel reading today, uh, the Acts of Jesus come to an end, and then in the Book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit uh, have their foundation. We will, of course, have to wait a little while, though, before the Holy Spirit comes. Um, we've waited 40 days um, uh, and in the company of Jesus. Now we have to wait for um, another 10 days um, whilst we're waiting for Pentecost to arrive. And waiting isn't always easy, is it? Um, I don't know about you, but even I sometimes have been fed up with having to wait inside um, uh, when I could be out doing other things. It's not easy. But let's go back to that idea about waiting for something exciting uh, to begin again. And beginnings are important. At some point in the hopefully not too distant future, we are going to begin a new time of normality following this time of the COVID-19 virus. That normality, I guess, many of us when we started um, uh, with, uh, with, with this lockdown thought we would get back to uh, normal, very close to what things were like before it happened. My guess is now most of us think it's going to be quite a lot different to that. And it's going to be tough. So it's good to think about new beginnings. How might we do it again? When we get, how might we do things better when we finally are released from our lockdown? And I want to just make three very brief points about beginnings. The first thing is we need to begin with Jesus. If we stick with Jesus' teaching as the guidebook for, 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 for living our lives, then we may find that, uh, uh, that, that, that all the things that Jesus began to do and teach, as um, Luke tells us in that passage from Acts, it's an interesting phrase, um, and, and I, I've loved the time in lockdown because I've noticed little words and phrases that I've kind of just passed over before. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not all that Jesus did and taught, but all that he began to do and teach. In other words, Jesus' teaching, Jesus' actions are going on still today. And we need to make sure we're aligned to those. So when we're able to begin a, a, a more normal life again, we need to make sure we do it in the company of Jesus. And then it does begin with waiting. Waiting actually can be good for us sometimes. It's, 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 um, it, it, it's sometimes we need to have time to, to consider and to take stock. And certainly COVID-19 has given us a lot of time to do that. What are the things that we've been doing that have made life better, as well as the awful things that have been happening? Have you noticed, I'm sure you have, because many of you com commented on it, uh, the joy of the bird song and the beauty of the flowers in the churchyards in our gardens. Um, that may have something to do with the fact that pollution levels, noise levels, traffic and other things have dropped. And now I'm not suggesting, therefore, that in order to gain economic recovery we should take everything off the road. That would be, I guess, stupid. But maybe we ought to take some time to think about how the beginnings, the new beginnings when they come, might take a, a, a better care of God's creation. And the final thing I would say, that the, uh, the, this Ascension Day marked the beginning of mission of the church. Jesus 
at his ascension tells his disciples to go and make disciples of souls across the whole world, starting in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the whole, all the ends of the earth, was that in the phrase that we heard. So when we come back, it's not just a case of coming back to what we're familiar with, it's about coming back to do new things in, 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 by way of mission. One of the joys again of this lockdown is when we've been worshiping outside of the churchyard, I've spoken to more people than I do in church. Different people, more new people perhaps. Of course I've missed all of you who come here regularly, but there is a whole new opportunity out there for mission to, con to continue having contacts. And all that begins really with this movement from Jesus' acts coming to the end of their earthly period and the new birth of the church for which we must wait a little while longer at Pentecost. Amen. So we profess our faith as we say together the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so for our intercessions, we do continue to hold before God the needs of the world at this time. We do pray for all those who are struggling as a result of COVID-19. For those who are victims of it themselves, for those who have family members or friends or loved ones who, uh, who they're missing and unable to, uh, to, to be in touch with. We give thanks for all those who are working on the front line to treat. And uh, it's nice to know that uh, Ascension Day, um, I think somehow the, the clap for them will be uh, a, an extra special one this, this evening. We pray for wisdom and guidance for governments and for local councils. We pray for courage uh, in all those who are working in science to try to find a vaccine. And we pray that um, we all might uh, heed the uh, instructions to continue to, to be safe, to be alert, to be watchful, to care um, more for others than for ourselves, which is the very essence of the Christian gospel. So we pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here on earth. Almighty and ever being God, who by thy holy apostles taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks to all men. We have to beseech you most mercifully to accept our prayers and to receive these uh, them which we offer unto thy divine majesty. Beseech you to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech you also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto our whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion, and virtue. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, 
They may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly receive thee thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants who departed this life in thy faith and fear. Proceed to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. And we pray for comfort for all who mourn. God needs our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator, and advocates. Amen. Ye do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against our divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy and promised forgiveness of sins, to all them with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And here, what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith, that to all that truly turn to him, come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is meet, right, and abundant duty, and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of Glory. Born of a woman, he came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal, and by his ascension gives us a sure hope that where he is, we may also be. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. And the prayer of humble access. We do 
we've not risen, to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy has given thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient, sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in this holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. Like was after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink your remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. Shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost that safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, 
that we may continue in that holy fellowship and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory.
and remain with you this ascension tide and always.